What's up everybody that's uh, interested in scaling? I'm Zalias, I'm back to address another topic that I've seen misused a great many of times. So, if you've ever used scaling before, you know that it can vary drastically from person to person depending on who's doing the scaling. Uh, math is pretty absolute, but sometimes people get minute different things wrong and it can go uh, it can go pretty badly from there. Of course, lowballing is what's preferred, but there's more to it than simply lowballing. So, Let's get an understanding of what goes on when we scale. Now, when we scale, we're trying to find a guaranteed level of whatever stat, uh, such as speed, power, etc., that you're scaling for and base it off of another sometimes calculated feed. They're not always calculated, but that's what you're aiming for. This is needed as there are times when certain attacks or feats don't show us what they are narratively set up to be. Uh, you see many of those feats in my last video. They're much stronger than just what they're showing. But for example, character A, say character A dashes from one city to the next in a few seconds, and character B uh, speed blitzes character A. In this scenario, while we may not know the exact speed of character B, the one doing the speed blitzing, we know they can at minimum move faster than character A. And so while character B doesn't have the you know the point a to point b feet that character you know the first one did <laughs> their speed blitzing feet in of itself is scaling off of the original feet of the slower person this is most likely already understood by most people who would uh, be here but let's bring up something a bit deeper and that is calc stacking abuse this is when we apply a multitude of different multipliers to a past feat from, a diff from different times and arrive to new numbers for future events. You, there's other ways to do this, of course, but this is what I'm going to be starting with. Now, there are many examples of this, but one great example would be something like, say, first character lifts a thousand pounds, but character B, they can lift two thousand pounds, they can lift a ton. Now, seeing this, the, the weaker person, they can lift, uh, you know, now that they be, they've been outdone, you, ooh, they're starting to feel, you know, feel the pressure, now they match and they can lift 2,000 pounds as well. Now when we see this, it wouldn't be incorrect to say he doubled in strength, but it's not correct to say that if in later chapters that that person lifts 3,000 pounds, that if he's, ooh, if he's feeling the pressure again, he can lift 6,000 pounds. That, you can't just say that, that that's a... Uh, a big assumption that's being made there. Here's the problem, so in this situation the initial extra 1,000 pounds is doubling from lifting 1,000 pounds being outdone now lifting 2,000 but you can't just go from the oh he lifted 3,000 to 6,000 because this could instead lead to him lifting 4,000 pounds from the 3,000. Maybe him feeling outdone is the boost of a thousand pounds of extra strength that they can exert. So instead of 6,000 pounds, we get 4,000. That's quite a big number difference, especially if we try to retroactively apply this to a way past feat that already happened, and now apply it to future feats that can make numbers go up drastically. We don't want to do this if we're trying to be consistent, concise, and proper with our scaling. Now, it gets worse. Let's say he was actually injured when they could only lift the initial 1,000 pounds. And way later in the series, while injured, they lift an unknown amount, but they claim that they can only lift 80% while injured. Well, again, as I'm talking about retroactively, bringing all this to past feats, the mistake would be applying this 80% retroactively to those feats when we don't know what that 80% actually entails. Like, if the number is accurate or even supported, and what they're saying is 80% really might not be 80% based on anything other than just their statement that's not backed at all. Especially if that number is even relevant to their past self to the same degree or anything. Maybe 80% is all you can do now, but when you were a kid, maybe you were stronger, maybe you were weaker in terms of what injury did to you. Um, specifically with like your strength in this scenario. So, the catalyst for the 80% is the injury. And that can obviously change how it affects or has affected the character as they progress. Calc stacking abuse can get ridiculous fast too because each and every little added calculation can be stacked on top of the others, retroactively or otherwise, to make for extremely bad numbers for pretty much any series. An especially egregious act of calc abuse is when these numbers are multiplied simply by the feat being used multitude of times. 
This usually is involving attack potency versus durability, where people will make the huge mistake of thinking someone tanking 5 attacks with a, a force of 5, for example. Arbitrary numbers here, but somebody will tank 5 attacks simultaneous that have a force of, say, 5, and think that's the same as tanking one attack that has the force of 25. As if, like, if you can take bullets from a small firearm with no damage, then what's happening here is you'd take no damage five times. That doesn't mean that you can take a bazooka blast or anything. Uh, that it, or whatever's comparable to the actual combined force of the five small firearm shots into one attack. You can't say, uh, man, this sword sling, sword slash, you know, actually, let's make this example even, even more ridiculous. So, feats have force applied to them. We know this, we can measure out the force of attacks, but let's go more real life here. If you have a toddler, you know, they can throw out their little toddler punch, a little toddler kick, and it has its little amount of force. Now, if you put yourself in, like, a full plate of armor, I don't care if that toddler hits you, you know, a thousand times, hundred thousand times, they're not, you're not getting hurt. I don't even care if it was all at once. You're not getting hurt. But if you were to like somehow combine all the force into one, you'd be gone. They're not the same thing. They're not the same thing at all. So let's give a really good example. I can't help but go to Yu Hakusho when I'm trying to give really good examples. The series is very concise and it makes it very easy once again mostly going off of Taguro here being that he is a perfect character to use for scaling and I will also make sure to screw this up on purpose so you can get an idea so yeah Taguro is a perfect character to use he has a very simple power in growing muscle and regeneration so here you'll see that we have Taguro at 80% and we see him vaporizing the weaker demons in the stands from a distance with his passive aura. He's not targeting them, or is just vaping them. Now, additionally, we see here that Jin and Toy, it's the two demons talking to each other, they're stating that Taguro hasn't put out more than 30% of his 80% power. So, you know, they're lowballing it for us, and that comes out to 24% of his so called full power for those wondering. So, 1% less than a fourth of his full power, from what we know. Now, separately, anyone who knows the series already knew the ray gun is many times more powerful than Yusuke's base power shown to be about a minimum of at least two times stronger as soon as he gets it, let alone what he has later. But these numbers become important later. So here, following this, we see that Yusuke can't hurt him. And here, I'm talking like he really really can't hurt him. And in fact, when exerted and targeted to Yusuke, even the weakest thing Taguro can do, which is his aura, that is hurting Yusuke. And like, it's cutting him up, and Yusuke talks about the gulf in their power. So Yusuke can't even hurt him. His ray gun, which is much more potent, can't hurt him. And Taguro's aura when, you know, specifically targeting Yusuke, cuts him up. Cool, so let's get to more scaling here. So here, Yusuke removes his restrictions, the cuffs that Genkai gave him, and Kuwabara, the most in energy sensitive of the group, says that Taguro doesn't even begin to compare. Now, again, I'll be bringing up unbacked statements. Statements in series really need to be actually backed up. They need to be evidence, there needs to be feats supporting them. So let's see if this is backed up. Let's see if Taguro even begins to compare. And <laughs> would, you, would you look at that? Of, of course he is. Or rather, no, he doesn't at all. So the question here is, if Yusuke with cuffs on couldn't hurt 80% Taguro with his ray gun, no less, which is many times more potent than his punches, but uncuffed Yusuke could easily body the same 80% Taguro with his punches and not even his ray gun, like he doesn't even need his ray gun to do this. You tell me how many times more powerful is uncuffed Yusuke? Two cuffed Yusuke. Like, think about it. What would it take for this exchange to take place? Now, I want you to keep that number in your mind because I'll be coming back to it soon. So, moving on, this begins 100% Taguro. And from here, you'll see he now easily vaporizes a quarter of the audience. And in fact, those punches Yusuke was throwing is now easily blocked by his thumb. Uh, granted, he hasn't used his ray gun yet, however, so let's check that out. 
yes, he actually destroys the many times more powerful ray gun with a yell. He blocks his punch with a thumb and destroys his ray gun with a yell, which is less than the thumb. He then finishes this section of the fight with a one solid punch to the gut, sending him away. Now, do you remember your numbers from before? Again, how many times more powerful is uncuffed Yusuke than cuffed Yusuke? Because now I'm going to ask you, how many times more powerful did Taguro get from getting body to body Yusuke? Because, yeah, the actual answer is 10%. This is a 10% difference in total power. This isn't a 5 times more powerful. This isn't a 10 times, not 20, not 100 times more powerful. This was a 0.1 times power difference, as his 100% can be doubled. So, you know, he goes from 80% to 100, that's 20%. This is a 10% difference, as he can actually go to a 200%. So, these feats continue this trend as Yusuke awakens his full potential. By the way, Kuwabara does state, um, I didn't bring it up here, but he does make a statement about feeling Taguro's power, or rather, he'd be crazy if he could feel it. So all of these feats actually collaborate the actual shown statements. Now, when we scale for Yu Hakusho, we know off of Taguro that a 10% overall power increase is a low ball of, so minimum. It, it's got to be at least about 30% faster, but at least five times more durable and five times more strength or attack potency. We especially know the scaling here is fine. We know this is the case. Use K's power is not, wow, I also get more muscle. His power is not that. And yet he can blow for blow, you know, either have the upper hand, underhand against Taguro, but he can trade. And later, of course, he can trade pretty much evenly, even though his power isn't Taguro's power of just raw muscle. So that's why Taguro's a perfect example. He is raw muscle. And we can see how the scaling works for both characters, and this is the scaling for the series. So, this is what we want, where the feats speak for themselves, and is rooted in clear numbers, especially so where the character's literal power is increasing their body for pure physical force. So, yes, this is a lot of Yu Hakusho, but this all applies to any series, anywhere, any comics, doesn't matter. is just such a good example. It'd be dumb for me not to use it. So let me break it down now. I'm gonna actually make, I'm gonna apply where the scaling is screwed up, or where I can screw it up rather. So here we have 20% Taguro who lifts this ring that's accepted to be at least 100 tons. And here we have where he, at 0% Taguro, he punches his brother hard enough to knock him the distance of the entire island and a half. It's pretty, pretty far distance. This is at 0% Taguro. This would then be me, like me taking our scaling and retroactively saying that 10% Taguro being 10% weaker than his 20% self could only or at all casually carry 10 tons or at 0% one ton uh, across the island. When really we don't actually know <laughs> and yet in fact no one going backwards has shown a feat that would even suggest carrying 10 tons of weight casually that would scale to the 20% Taguro. And that 100 tons, again, was carried across the island by his 20% self. But you keep going back, you'd have to actually say that C-Class Yusuke, before Dark Tournament, could easily carry 10 tons of weight across the entire island if you're going to say that scaling backwards, that 10% Taguro could. This right here... This is the trap. Incorrect. Not the way to do it. Going backwards is a terrible way to scale things. Here you'll see uh, another big problem with scaling. You add other uncertain numbers into the mix, you can end up with astronomical numbers by the end of a series. I mean, in fact, uncertain numbers is usually the culprit here. This is why we lowball, of course. But even that can... You still need feats that actually prove even the minimum amount even the lowballed amount that's being stated here. So are there feats for that in Bleach? I'm not gonna, I don't care to actually go into that right now. I'm saying that's what you should be looking for. Okay, so going from there, if you're going this route with the uncertain numbers, it's important to understand that just because someone becomes, say, 10 times more powerful, that doesn't mean that all their stats are raised 10 times more, or evenly, or any such thing good example there's generally a consensus that the difference between Kaioken and Super Saiyan Kaioken is an actual direct 
modifier to the stats where as Super Saiyan is not. We're looking for things like that. There's a reason why those things are treated differently in a lot of sites. Now, just aside from that, from all stats, speed usually follows this to where a multiplier happens, but the speed is either untouched or is almost entirely the multiplier, which is kind of why I brought up Bleach here, you know, Ichigo. Now, with this, also, it's important to know that uncertain feats can happen without people realizing it, such as one person being two times faster than another. This seems concrete and easy to extrapolate, but this doesn't mean their speed actually stays the same, or like both of them or the gap between them is staying the same. With the uncertain numbers in their speed, where we don't know just one person is two times faster than the other, finding their speed in a later chapter or episode is not enough to say the speed they were at from before and then try to use multipliers for the later feat. So hopefully people will start to use more feats to back the claims made on multipliers, and I hope this clears up a lot of the confusion dealing with scaling and the problems people face in doing so. I didn't touch on it too much, but believe me, character statements are one of the biggest drivers behind multipliers. And while statements are fine, I've decided to devote an entire video on what I call unbacked claims. Again, claims that are made that are unverified, unproven, don't have evidence that actually support them. And so it's important that we stick to feats, scale going forward and not backwards with the feats as like the, the actual basis for what we're looking at, and stay away from uncertain numbers when we're calc stacking, unless at minimum the low ball is evidenced by feats. All that said, I'm Zalius. Thanks for listening.